And that is the golden rule in recovery that I've found after working with hundreds of people all around the world. Miguel, if someone's struggling with an unexplained chronic health issue, something like chronic fatigue syndrome or long COVID, what are some steps they can take to get their life back? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think there's so many things they could do. There's a million different answers online. I mean, like our YouTube channel has over 1200 videos, but it can be very confusing to some people. So what I've found to really work it is kind of following these three main steps in order to go from surviving to thriving. So number one, the most important thing is education. It's, it's teaching yourself and understanding what's going on, understanding the root cause of what's causing this. Because, you know, for the longest time, you know, depending on how long as so, someone has been dealing with this for, it can feel like you're finding a ghost. You don't even know what's wrong with your body or where your symptoms are coming from. You don't even know what you have, right? So once you understand that this is like a hypersensitive nervous system, as long as you got all your tests and scans done, once you can pinpoint that root cause and understand the ins and outs of it to the basics, you don't have to know every single piece of science out there, it's really going to help you wrap your head around this and give you a strong starting point and foundation to attack the problem. That's number one. It's figuring out what we're even up against. Okay. Number two, it's okay. Now we have to do things to actually solve this problem, solve the root cause. Now that we know what the problem is, now let's try to fix the problem. And we do that through neuroplasticity, right? Or you could call it brain retraining. Essentially, we're trying to shift the body from this fight or flight or survival state, from this hypersensitive nervous system state to a nervous system that's functioning more normally. Right. So all we're doing is recalibrating the nervous system to function more normally. And you do that by implementing brain retraining. And at the very core basis of that, it's really your response to symptoms. I remember when I was bedridden in the hospital for two months, the thing that really got me out of this and helped give me my life back was this principle. It's your success in recovery is determined by how well you respond to symptoms. So how are you responding to symptoms? Whenever you feel pain in your body or discomfort or a high heart rate, what are the stories you're telling yourself? Are you telling yourself, this thing might kill me, this thing's going to take me out, I might have a heart attack, or are you reminding yourself, hey, this is just a hypersensitive nervous system, right? So your response to symptoms is so, so important. That is the golden rule in recovery that I've found after working with hundreds of people all around the world. So that's number two. It's implementing the brain training. And all that means is responding well to symptoms. Okay. So we have education, number one. Number two is neuroplasticity or, or you know, brain retraining, responding well to symptoms. Now, number three can only happen once you get those first two down. But number three is building threshold, right? So how do we slowly add on activities? How do we slowly work our way from being housebound to now walking outside or going into a mall or having lunch with friends or driving and doing groceries? How do we slowly expand our world in a way that we're not going backwards or, or crashing, right? So how do we do that? How do we do that in a safe way? And you do that really by doing the first two, right? It's understanding what's going on, which will allow you to do number two, which is respond well to symptoms. And if you respond well to symptoms, what happens is your nervous system starts to shift into this or shift out of this hypersensitive state. And as you shift out of that hypersensitive state, you start to have a little bit less symptoms because all those symptoms are there for to, to keep your fight or flight mode alive. It's like a cycle. So once you start turning the dial down on that fight or flight mode, you actually start to improve in your capacity. And that's when you can slowly start adding things on. And then points number two and three, they, that just becomes a cycle. So as you expand activity, you're going to have some flare-ups. You're going to feel some symptoms, but you need to go back to point number two, which is respond well to symptoms. If you respond well to symptoms, now you open up more capacity so you can build more threshold and then you respond well to those symptoms and you keep going back and forth until you know you have thriving health, until you're, you've surpassed basically where you were before. And you know I can honestly say, I have a much better quality of life now than I used to have prior to getting sick. I have more capacity. I can handle more. I can work out more. Um, 
in a sustainable way. So, you know, you can absolutely go from surviving to thriving following those three steps. Obviously, there's a lot more that goes into it. But in a nutshell, that's essentially how you could get your life back. You follow those three steps. Yeah. And we recorded a whole longer podcast on it. So if, if you like what you're hearing and want to get get the nitty gritty, make sure and check out the next episode. But I'll ask you just one follow-up now for this episode. When you're talking about responding to symptoms, can you, again, without going all the way into detail, can you just give an overview of the difference between uh, going into the brain retraining to respond appropriately as you described versus doing a downshift or backing off some of the expansion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it's actually a bit of both because as you flare up, you do want to take your foot off the gas pedal a little bit, right? Slow down a little bit, but don't completely stop, right? Dial it back a little bit, slow down. So you have, you know, some space and some clarity to respond well to the symptoms. Um, But it is kind of a, a mix of both of those things, right? The most important thing is is keeping your nervous system uh, under a certain stimulation level. Because we all have this maximum threshold for stress. If you're constantly redlining the engine, think of your body as an engine, if you're constantly doing stuff and doing stuff physically, mentally, uh, emotionally, you're going to be redlining your engine. So the more you redline the engine, the more stimulated you are, the more symptoms you will have, right? So if you can handle the symptoms, if you can actually remind yourself pay it's just the nervous system and not downward spiral, then by all means, you know, keep it nice and high. You'll be okay if you respond well. But the moment it starts getting a little bit shaky and then the doubt starts to creep in and you start thinking, oh shoot, did I overdo it? Uh-oh, maybe, maybe I bit off more than I could chew. I might go backwards. Once you start getting those questions seep into your mind, that's a really good time to dial it back and then um, just allow your body to kind of recalibrate to this level of activity. Like you'll likely have an adjustment period, which is basically a flare up, but you haven't focused on dealing with those symptoms properly and really responding well and being as, as having as little emotion as possible during that phase. And the only way you, you fight emotion is with logic. So going back to the basics, going back to, Hey, this is my nervous system. It's in survival mode. It's a software glitch. My brain is actually sending these these signals to my body to make it think it's experiencing these symptoms. So you can really only fight emotion with logic. And that's really one of the best ways to respond to symptoms. It's just bring it back to logic. You know, logic will be your safety net in all of this. And it really sounds like there's an element of skill here as well. Like we all want, it'd be so great to have this piece of paper with the answer, you know, just do this, here it is. But really it's, it sounds like more of an art and building the skill, knowing yourself, knowing your nervous system, knowing your threshold. And I like that long-term because I think if people build skills like that, like you really get a lot of confidence and then you know, you're know more free to go Absolutely. do what you want in the world and know whatever happens, you'll be able to handle it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think the whole goal, at least what I try to teach people is we're not just trying to get rid of the symptoms and get back to living life again. And then you just move on. It's like, Okay, how do you get your life back and then make sure this never, ever, ever happens again? Because that's what a lot of people fear too. It's like, oh, I'm in remission. I don't like that word remission because that that gives the impression that you're kind of walking life on eggshells or you're like walking on a cliff and oops, you slip. Oh, now you're back in the hole. It doesn't work like that. Like once you work your way out of this and you know exactly how you got out of this, it's very difficult to go backwards into that same hole. You'd almost have to intentionally ignore all the things that you learned that got you to where you are now in order to get there. I've never seen it happen, all right? So you may dip a little bit. Let's say you recover, then you get COVID. All right, so you dip for like two weeks, but then you have the tools. You use the tools and they bounce back very quickly, actually. But you'll never get stuck in the trenches uh, like you were before once you make it out of this. That's powerful. That's powerful. Miguel, thank you. Appreciate it.